Yoga is a very old science and a disciplined way of life. When practicing yoga, on the mat or in everyday life, one brings together in perfect harmony mind, body and spirit. While yoga students can leave their worries at the door, studio owners like Autumn are on their toes growing their businesses and dealing with finances. Autumn just opened a brand new yoga studio and she's trying to figure out the minimum number of students required each day to break even the first month. She's offering two options, $12 per class if you buy a pass of 10 classes and $18 per class if you just drop in. Open seven days a week, the total cost of running the studio works out to an average of $360 per day. So here's the question. How many students does she need each day to make a profit? When income exceeds expenses, you have a profit. You know the daily expenses. Now you need to figure out an algebraic expression for the daily income. Since daily attendance varies, let X be the average number of pass holders on a given day and Y the average number of drop-ins. The income expression is $12 for every X and $18 for every Y, or 12X plus 18Y. To make a profit, 12X plus 18Y must be greater than 360. This is a linear inequality in two variables X and Y. Once again, it's linear because the degree of the polynomial is 1, namely, its highest power is 1. To solve such linear inequalities, we use the algebraic properties of inequality and the geometry of linear function graphs. Let's begin by converting this inequality from standard form to slope-intercept form. Subtracting 12x from both sides using the subtraction property gives 18y greater than 360 minus 12x. Dividing both sides by 18 using the division property leaves the direction of the inequality unchanged because 18 is positive. You obtain y greater than 20 minus 2 thirds x or y greater than negative 2 thirds x plus 20. Let's use what we know about linear equations to understand the meaning of this inequality. The related equation y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 20 is a linear relationship between two variables. So its graph is a line in a two-dimensional plane. We call y f of x or a function of x since y changes as x changes. Let's begin by graphing this line using the TI Inspire. Turn on the TI Inspire, press the home key, then 6 to open a new document. You may be prompted to save an open document. After you decide, select 2 to create a graphs and geometry page. The blinking cursor is on the function NT line by f1 of x. Type in negative 2 thirds x plus 20. For a fraction placeholder, press Control and the division key. Enter negative 2 in the numerator, press the down arrow and enter 3. Then press the right arrow. The X key is the first green button on the last row. Press Enter to graph. Press Escape to move the cursor from the entry line to the work area.